Yes, sir. Okay. So now we look at how this capacitor is designed. See, we are saying that there is one transistor, one capacitor in the DRAM cell. How do we make the capacitor? So let, let's look at this thing over here. Over here, word line is running in the polysilicon. So word line is taken care of. Bit line connects to one edge of the one one terminal of the uh, like one either source or drain of the NMOS, and the other side has to have a capacitor. That capacitor could be made by using poly, having a little dielectric in between, and then again putting some poly. Huh? So how will this look like in a screenshot? Something like this, where uh, different, what do we say? Where the polyfin structure has been used so that overall capacitance is higher. Hmm? This represents the blue one, represents the bit line, source drain region. The pink one is the capacitor. The green ones are the other plate, other side of the capacitor. This is the poly gate. Is this clear? Are you able to see this? So this structure of poly is making them in par uh, parallel, so to increase the capacitors. Yes, in the in the so you are going vertically. You are adding fins. Yes. So yes. that in the same area you are able to implement a much higher capacitor. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. So this is how this could look like in a in a bigger setting where the capacitor could actually be made. So over here, and the bit line is over here, and uh, the capacitor is now made between uh, somewhere above, far above, metal four, metal five ke beach mein, you make these capacitors. Is that okay? The capacitor can be implemented in two ways. In the previous one, we said uh, it is right there in the poly, so much below metal one itself, whereas it can also be implemented by a metal and metal capacitor. So MIM capacitor where the poly, uh, the, the plug on the source drain actually comes to a much higher voltage level, a much higher uh, metal level. And over there, this dielectric is added. Hmm? So this is called as capacitor over bit. There are other ways to make capacitors. So capacitance over bit we just saw. The fin capacitor we also just saw. Uh, we will just look at tens capacitors. Tens capacitors, what do they involve? They involve us digging a trench into the silicon substrate. And when that is done, uh, I, I make I, I deposit a very thin line of dielectric there. And then I fill this with poly again. So now in the trench capacitor, you do not even need to go up high up and do not need to waste area and due to contacts and vias or anything like that. The trench can be de designed right there inside your memory cell right next to the source drain region. It can be connected like that, just like this. You see the trench is connected to the transistor source drain region. Any questions? So the trench one is less complex while designing. Yes. Okay. 
The trench one is actually complex in designing and you see this is how the DRC is defined. The aspect ratio, if I keep the trench to be wide, I can go very, very deep. Yes, sir. My capacitance can be large. If I do not want to give, but I lose area. If I do not want to give area, then due to the very nature of it being a trench, I go to lesser depth and my capacitor reduces. This is intuitive. When we wanted to use larger capacitance, we were ready to probably give more area also. But it is important to understand that if area is the primary thing, then you can do something more about it by doing away, for example, with uh, the depth. Is that okay? So area is the uh, main concern over here, like? Yes, you reduce the area, you reduce the area, you therefore end up reducing the depth and the capacitance value, Yes. The amount of capacitance. So area and capacitance are a direct head-to-head trade-off. So what did we look at till now? That the capacitor should be big. If the capacitor is big, I can do faster, more robust read. I can reduce refresh requirements. Uh, I want to keep a big capacitor, but I want to reduce the area penalty. And uh, see if the capacitor is big, what happens? To discharge or charge the capacitor also takes longer. So right time, also increases, but we somehow should ensure that right is non-timing critical. How do we do that? We already talked about word line overdrive. We talked of it in terms of ensuring that there is no VT drop at the store node, uh, but uh, in reality, when you do word line overdrive, you also speed things up a bit. So right, right operation should not be timing critical. Only read operation should be timing critical. Hmm? So if I want to reduce, if I want to reduce area, then capacitor becomes smaller. Uh, however, bit line capacitance either remains same or increases. Hmm? So bit line capacitance per bit cell. So the reality is that too, as the scaling happens, I should use bigger capacitor. As I go to more, more finer geometries, I need bigger capacitor, but the density requirements of the advanced technology would limit me to use a smaller capacitor. Hmm? In advanced technologies, trench capacitors therefore are limited because the trench capacitors try to reduce area. Uh, try to reduce when you when you want to reduce the area in the trench capacitors, the capacitance value reduces, but you want to increase the capacitance. So uh, the metal and metal capacitance or the capacitance over bit is more promising for advanced technologies. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Hmm? When you use metal and metal capacitor, there are more steps involved. More steps involved means more defectivity can come into picture. There can be yield loss. Uh, otherwise, there are, you know, any decision that we make also has an impact on speed on performance improvement, not just area. So all these three things have to be kept in mind when you are deciding which kind of technology to go for. Now, if you're going to join any circuit design company, then it doesn't make a difference because that's this, this thing will be decided for you by the company itself. But if you're going to join a, a company which does not have its own fab and does not have its own capacitance creation process, then you have a choice whether you want to go to TSMC or Global Foundries or ST or someone 
to choose the technology and it is for that that this discussion is relevant for you okay so until now what we have seen is that uh, dram cell is based on capacitor storage which is non generative non regenerative in nature it has very high density to boast of gigabits per centimeter square and there is therefore for imaging processors graphics processors or multimedia processors there is a huge on chip dram also that we are talking about however uh there is a challenge in scaling the dram capacitors and uh the parasitics become more and more important as we go to advanced technologies so speed takes a hit especially in the morning hours the speed takes a hit huh and uh, okay for dram you definitely need periodic refresh is it clear till here could you once again tell why the aid loss was coming in the picture in last slide why the so about the aid loss yeah so uh, the more the number of fabrication steps involved hmm the more the probability that there will be some misalignment or some extra defectivity that will come into picture since the stem of the dram capacitor the mim capacitor needs to be built across multiple process steps multiple layers anywhere if there is a misalignment there could be a loss in yield because of some capacitance or something that comes into picture is it clear yes sir thank you sir sir yes 